Here's a look at what's going on this week in the news, and we begin with news from the Vatican. Culminating the special day of Marian prayer at the Vatican on October 13th, Pope Francis formally entrusted the world to Mary. During the short ceremony before a congregation of 100,000 in St. Peter's Square, the Pope stood before the statue of Mary that normally stands in the shrine at Fatima, Portugal. The crowned statue of Our Lady of Fatima arrived in Rome by plane from Portugal. The statue was then brought to the residence of retired Pope Benedict XVI, where he briefly venerated the statue in the monastery's small chapel. Afterwards, the statue was welcomed at the Vatican Guest House, where Pope Francis lives. Earlier in the day, on Sunday, the Pope celebrated a Marian Mass. During his homily, the Pope invoked the intercession of Mary, asking her to help us be open to God's surprises, to be faithful to Him each and every day, and to praise and thank Him, for He is our strength. In news now from around the country, Auxiliary Bishop Gerald Wilkinson of Los Angeles, president of the California Catholic Conference, said that new California laws allowing non-physicians to perform abortions and repealing some building regulations that govern abortion clinics dramatically increased the availability of abortion in the state. On October 9th, Governor Jerry Brown signed into law a measure that permits a nurse practitioner, certified nurse midwife, or physician assistant to perform an abortion by aspiration techniques during the first trimester of pregnancy. These non-physician medical professionals must complete eight weeks of specified training and comply with specified standardized procedures or protocols. Bishop Wilkerson said these first trimester abortions can now be performed in primary care clinics not designed for surgery, creating, the bishop said, a two-tier health system where women and girls of means will seek out physicians with surgical skills and hospital admitting privileges, while many without means will seek out these non-physicians in primary care clinics. More news now from the Vatican. Pope Francis met recently with the President of the European Parliament at the, to discuss many issues, including the recent tragedies in Lampedusa. Rome Reports has more on the meeting. Pope Francis met with the President of the European Parliament, Martin Schulz. Both leaders discussed how to avoid another tragedy like Lampedusa, where hundreds of African immigrants drowned as they tried to make their way to Europe. After their 30-minute meeting, President Schulz talked with the press, discussing the need for European countries to work together on this issue. And we must fight against the hopelessness, uh, against civil wars, against hunger, by more solidarity, more worldwide cooperation, more development. He also talked about how 25 years ago, John Paul II addressed the European Parliament. In fact, one of the three books Schulz gave to Pope Francis deal with that very visit. <laughs> and therefore I thought it is a quite great chance and a big opportunity to invite once more uh, Pope Francis to address in the foreseeable time the European Parliament and uh, I think my message was uh, well received and heard. During their conversation, the Pope at times spoke to the president in German. He also gave him some advice in Spanish. Schulz was accompanied by his collaborators. And afterwards, the president met with the Vatican Secretary of State, Tarsicio Pertone. Staying at the Vatican, the Vatican announced on October 11th that Pope Francis had advanced the sainthood causes of seven men and women, including a Canadian and an English founder of two religious orders for women. He also declared the Italian medieval mystic, Blessed Angela of Foligno, a saint, foregoing the usual process of canonization and without formally recognizing a second miracle. According to church rules, a miracle is needed after beatification to make a candidate eligible for canonization. Pope Francis recently approved the canonization of Blessed John XXIII in absence of a miracle. Jesuit Father Federico Lombardi, the Vatican spokesman, told Catholic News Service that exceptions to the normal sainthood process have been made throughout the church's history. And finally in the news, according to researchers at Georgetown University's Center for Applied Research in the Apostolate, or CARA, most U.S. Catholics are not looking for spirituality online. In fact, half of them are unaware the church even has an online presence. According to the study, the most widely used communication tool in the Catholic Church is the Parish Bulletin, followed by a diocesan newspaper or magazine in print form.
For Catholics who attend Mass weekly, Cara said 13% of them read Catholic blogs and 17% view religious material on YouTube. The findings were presented to a group of editors in Washington attending a Catholic Press Association Catholic News Service Liaison Committee meeting. Robert De Francesco, Catholic Press Association president, said the study affirms the good work the Catholic Press is doing and also highlights the work they still have cut out for them in balancing print and online efforts. And by the way, the reason why U.S. Catholics are not looking for spirituality online is because they have not yet discovered CatholicTV.com, a great place to learn more about your faith. And that is all the information we have for you this time. I'm Kevin Nelson. Don't forget, you can keep up to date on Catholic news throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network.